welcome to Chandler in Focus. I'm Council Member Kevin Hartke, and today I have the privilege of, of spending a little time with two members of our Chandler Police Force that are going to talk about holiday safety tips. So today we have Sergeant Daniel Mejia and Lieutenant Scott Beach, and welcome to Chandler in Focus. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. As we approach the holidays, families can feel not only a certain level of excitement and, and also stress that brings a whole new environment, both in homes and to our streets as people are uh, engaging in the holidays and perhaps traffic is up. So we'd like to talk about a few things that will help our residents be safe uh, in their cars and in their homes. So before we get started, I'd like to hear a little bit more about your story. So. So Sergeant Mejia, tell us about yourself. Well, uh, I've been with the city of Chandler for 15 years, currently a sergeant for the public information office. Uh, I've been in law enforcement for 20 years as a certified officer. I began my career in 1995 as a dispatcher, um, obviously went back to patrol. During patrol, I was fortunate enough to uh, participate in several specialties. I've been a uh, SWAT team member, crisis negotiator, uh, property crimes detective, school resource officer, uh, narcotics detective, and uh, recently about two years promoted and uh, currently I'm the PIO sergeant. Well, congratulations on your fairly recent promotion. And thank you. Thank you for your years of service and the, and the things that you do to help our city. So, Lieutenant Beach, tell us about yourself. Well, I've been with the police department since 1995. I've served in many capacities in the department from field training officer to patrol, school resource officer, I've spent the bulk of my time in the traffic unit, probably eight years, roughly. Uh, two years ago, uh, I was brought back to the traffic unit as a lieutenant, and that's where I'm serving currently. And again, thank you for your service as well. Absolutely. So Sergeant Mejia, when we think about the holidays, it seems that there is often more the conversation of crimes of opportunity. And uh, I know that we address this all the time, and our, and our police do a fantastic job of of alerting our, our residents if they leave garage doors open. And I, and I often hear great praise for doing that. Tell us about crimes of opportunity around the holidays and what can we do to prevent them? Well, precisely those are crimes of opportunity. We have uh, a number of crimes. For instance, uh, we have the vehicle burglaries that occur during that time. Uh, we have the stolen vehicles. We have the uh, thefts, you know, the snatch and goes. When people aren't paying attention to what they're doing. Um, we have the fraud scheme calls too, and uh, people are preoccupied doing other things. Their mind's not uh, focused in safety. Uh, they're not aware of the surroundings. So, you know, part of the educational program that we put out during the holidays is to remind people when you're out there, it's going to be busy. It's a hustle and bustle. People want to go, get in, get out, get the gifts, but at the same time, they're not focused on safety, you know, and we want to promote that. Pay attention to your surroundings with uh, cell phones now being the big thing with social media. We want them to, you know, look for escape uh, routes and maybe pay attention, park in the lighted area and stuff like that. So uh, it's definitely something that uh, we can do better if we just focus a little bit and pay more attention to our surroundings. I imagine the vault, the mall is probably uh, a high hit area, but we have some other uh, pretty heavy retail intensive intersections that the same things can go on. Yeah, most certainly. I mean, the mall, it, it's, it's busy. There's a lot of people there, a lot of traffic volume. Um, and, you know, criminals, they key on that. They key on those distractions, especially uh, when people are leaving vehicles unsecured or they have high dollar items that are visible in their vehicles. For example, a GPS on their windshield, a laptop or a purse. That's just the uh, precisely the crime of opportunity for someone to move in and uh, victimize somebody. Now, another area of crimes of opportunity that I imagine increases during the holidays is more and more people are shopping online, and Amazon is is a, a profitable company these days. What would you say to uh, for people who have packages delivered to their houses? For people that have packages delivered. I would uh, recommend that if you are going to have something delivered to your home, maybe work with that shipping company to maybe sort out a time frame when that person will be home, and that way those packages are not left unattended. 
maybe you can change the shipping location to your workplace where you will be there to receive the package. And also you can have a, a family member, a good friend or a neighbor keep an eye out for those packages and avoid being victimized that way. That's a good idea in terms of letting someone, your neighbor, know to watch your house. And unlike Home Alone, it's not often that if our houses are going to be vandalized, that someone is actually in the house. So what would you also recommend as people are visiting relatives or going on vacations? What would be some good tips for uh, defense for our homes? Yeah, with, it's typical that people leave for vacations, like you mentioned. So one of the things we recommend is have, again, a family friend, a good neighbor, watch your house, you know, you, they can have the key to your residence, make sure they're cleaning up after, you know, any newspapers or propaganda that's left at your residence, because that way it, it says that somebody's at the house, they're taking care of, of that aspect. The other thing is Chandler Police, if you go on our website, chandlerpd.com, there is a vacation watch form that you can fill out, and uh, it'll ask you simple details when you're leaving, when you're coming, somebody that's in charge, and police officers will patrol and uh, make sure that your residence is, is okay for the holidays. And I always wonder when I see friends of mine that are traveling and they're showing great pictures of themselves on the beach at some exotic location, does, does that increase crime? Do people pay attention to that or it, do people exploit that angle? Yeah, and that, that's a very good point. Um, one of the things we recommend is not to post that you're gonna be gone for X amount of time because as we all know, social media can easily be hacked. People uh, can be connected to other of your friends that you don't know quite certain. And uh, that could be you know, uh, a recipe for disaster. People that identify your home, go in there and burglarize it. So. I think there's also uh, just the advantage too of knowing your neighbors and having them know you to be able to keep an eye on your house and put a car in your driveway, do things like that. Those are some of the things we've practiced through the years. It's just those good old black watches and um, being aware of what goes on in your neighborhood. Right, and that's a, a very good point with uh, block watches. You know, if there is something like that in your neighborhood, in effect, maybe approach the leader or the captain of that block watch and let them know you're gonna be gone for X amount of days and they can keep an eye out for you too. I really enjoyed being able to, to go on the gain tour recently, uh, not too many weeks ago, in which we saw neighborhoods going out of their way to get to know each other, to celebrate what they have in common, and to share stories, recipes, and concerns. So that was a good thing. Yes, and, and it's part of that, you know, communities taking care of each other, the interaction and getting to know your neighbor. Oh, very good. Well, speaking of our houses and how to keep our houses secure, we'd like to show a video from our fire health and medical department about electronic safety, our electrical safety, candles in your home, do's and don'ts, ladders, and cooking. Although we like good cooking, uh, we wanna make sure that it doesn't create hazards. So let's take a look at this now. Hi, my name is Keith Welch, Battalion Chief with Chandler Fire and Health and Medical Department. And I'm here today give you a few tips to try to keep your family safe during the holidays. Chandler Fire and Health and Medical runs a variety of calls during the holidays and we have a few things that we believe you can do at your house to make sure that you're safe. A few of the topics we're going to cover today are electrical safety, candles in the home, ladders, and also cooking. Please have a listen. Thanks. You know every year um, we respond to quite a few calls of people putting up their Christmas lights and they've fallen off of it. And those sometimes can be very minimal um, injuries, but also we've had some very devastating injuries because of it. So I'm here to talk to you today about a few key things that we would like you to keep in mind when putting up your Christmas lights using your ladders this year. One is making sure that your ladder is secured properly. Second one is make sure you have the proper climbing angle. The third thing is make sure that it is um, on a nice flat surface and it's secured. Lastly, we want to make sure that someone is also there to hold the ladder and support you while you're going up and down the ladder. During the holidays, everybody puts up Christmas lights. And 
there's a few safety tips that I'd like to give you to make sure that everybody stays safe. One, make sure before you put your lights up, you're checking the lights and the wiring to make sure that there's no frayed wire and that it's all intact. Two, we want you not to overload your outlets. You can prevent that by purchasing a surge protector that allows you to plug in multiple sets of wires in here and keep your electrical system protected. And lastly, before you leave, always make sure you turn out your Christmas lights. If you choose to have real candles in your home, make sure they're in a sturdy container. And also make sure that when you're using them, you have them on a very stable surface that's clear of any paper, cloth, and away from curtains. Uh, next thing, candles need to be monitored. When you leave a room, make sure you blow them out. As an alternative, Chandler Fire Health and Medical recommends a flameless candle. These can be purchased at a local retailer and offer a great option for decorating your house during the holiday season. One of the most active areas during the holidays um, at Center House Cooking is the kitchen area. It's a place where people congregate, it's a place where people are cooking. There's a lot of activity, but there's also a lot of potential for danger. There are a few tips that I'd like you to know um, about kitchen safety that will keep your holiday fun and safe. One is the cooking area. Please make sure you keep approximately a three foot area around your stove clear of people and also pets. Um, you want to make sure that nobody is accidentally bumping into the stove, knocking off any pots or pans. Two is when you're cooking, make sure your pan handles and pot handles are turned inside. Um, that keeps anybody who is coming by the kitchen or any small children, um, it prevents them from reaching up and grabbing it. Third is make sure you have your area clear. We don't want any um, paper products or pot holders. Um, close to the stove that have the potential to maybe come in contact with the flame and catch on fire. And lastly, which is very important, is always keep your food attended while you're cooking. It's very easy to get distracted and move away from the kitchen, um, but we always need someone there to monitor what is being um, cooked on the stove and to make sure if there are any fires or there are any hazards, we're able to address them. If you do have a fire on your stove, um, you want to make sure that you if you're using a pot, you want to make sure that you have a lid that you can slide right over the pot um, to make sure that you can put the fire out. If you do not have that, use baking soda. Do not put water on a grease fire. Second thing is, we also recommend having a fire extinguisher in your kitchen that you're able to utilize. And lastly, but not least, make sure you get everybody out of the kitchen if there is a fire. I hope you found the tips that we went over in our video today very helpful. From our family at Chandler Fire Health and Medical to yours, we hope you have a very safe and happy holiday season. Well, welcome back. Lieutenant Veach, let's talk about driving habits and staying safe on the roads. That's something, as you mentioned, you were involved with and came back to oversee as a lieutenant. It's my passion. <laughs> very good. What are some trends around the holidays that people should be aware of? Well, I think the trend we're seeing now, and I think it just, uh, it, can, it grows during the holidays is distracted driving. People are in a hurry using their cell phone either for mapping or whatever reason, and they're distracted, maybe not knowing where they're going. Um, those are the things that I would uh, emphasize on, on minimizing during the holidays to prevent accidents and not being in a rush. So maybe take time to map out where you're going before you jump in the car to find that latest sale or to go to that party is uh, look at those plans before you get in your car. That would be ideal. Have, have a plan of where you're going to go and, and try to stick to it. Uh, it's, it's pretty common to see people when they are distracted looking for an address. They exhibit the same driving behavior as a, a drunk driver. Slow speed, weaving in a lane, you pull up close to them, you look in the car and you see that they're, they're either mapping where they're going or they're texting somebody. So having a plan and sticking to it would be helpful. My tried and true solution is to get in the car and not knowing where I'm going, start driving and turn to my wife and say, do you know where you're going or where we're going? And she pulls out her phone and then we map out a plan, which having a passenger is always helpful for doing those as well. That's ideal. So what recommendations do you have to prevent accidents on our streets? It's really uh, people obeying the traffic laws and, and again, not being distracted. Uh, driving is a divided attention task. You have a lot of things that are going on in the car, gas pedal brake, radio, 
if you throw another component in there like a cell phone, you've just taken away attention from what you should be doing, which is driving. Um, so minimizing that and really be focused on what you're doing and paying attention. And of course, obeying the traffic laws and the speed limit and such. You know, I remember many years ago, over 20 years ago, I was driving to somewhere in Phoenix and I was, I, I was convinced I was late. I uh, was speeding, got a ticket on uh, Ray Road. And the frustrating part of this is I still made it on time. Hmm. And even though with the extra stop that, that went with that and, and not speeding afterwards, it was, this, it was a sense of heightened urgency within me that was unfounded. And uh, that was a good lesson for me. Absolutely. And it slowed me down quite a bit after that. So tell us about what is the city doing to prevent accidents? What are you seeing? Some of the, the good things that we are doing. Well, the city, a lot of people don't understand, and when you look at accident reduction, there's, there's a lot of components that are, that are part of the puzzle, so to speak. Traffic engineering plays a very big role in that through uh, intersection improvements, and more recently, the flashing yellow turn signals that you see in, in a handful of intersections. On the police department side, our traffic unit is tasked with accident reduction as well as reducing the number of DUI accidents that take place. Um, we look at it as a three-tiered approach we use awareness, education, and lastly, enforcement. Um, on the awareness side, we use our Facebook page to put out information. We do a public service announcement once a month to educate the public. And then on the educational side of it, there's many things we do. We go into the high school, teach distracted driving. We go into local businesses and, and teach traffic laws. Um, we put on a civilian motorcycle school twice a year through grant funds, through Governor's Office of Highway Safety. And lastly, we do the enforcement. When we identify a location that we think needs attention, what we'll do is we'll notify the public what we're doing and the problem, and then we'll go out and do our enforcement. But part of that enforcement is also education. So when we stop people, we're educating them on why we're stopping them. And if, if they need a citation, then of course we issue a citation. And I'm sure there's the active education that you're talking, but also passive education, which is just getting used to intersections when they change. And, and um, I imagine we're doing a good job of that. I, what, what have you seen in terms of some of the intersection changes in terms of accidents before and after intersections when we put the work in there to widen them? Are, are we seeing some good reductions in accidents? I believe traffic engineering and the intersection improvements probably makes the biggest impact as far as reduction. You, you will see when an intersection has been improved, you will see a significant reduction in accidents at that intersection. And then playing around with the flashing left turn arrows um, and getting people used to that and how they work, we've also seen a reduction in that aspect as well. Now, I know we had a, a trial period in which uh, I think we did about 10 of them, and obviously we, we thought it was successful, the, what we're seeing from your department and traffic, and now we're gonna be launching more of those. So I anticipate, again, as people get used to these, and again, not feeling like they have to be in a hurry to do something a uh, little extravagant, it's probably gonna make our roads even safer. Absolutely, and it probably would present a great opportunity for us to do a public service announcement on that to educate the public on how to properly make that turn and what to expect when you approach that intersection. And from my standpoint, the left turn accidents that we see, typically because of the dynamics involved, are usually the most dangerous because of the speeds involved. When somebody's blowing through a light or somebody's hurrying to make a left turn thinking they can beat a car, the speeds are much greater than a typical rear end accident. So those are, those are dangerous collisions. Yeah. I don't want you to get to the idea that I'm a bad driver, but I, I, I remember one time I had waded out into that intersection and the light turned red. This wasn't in our city. And, and then a car came burning through as I was already out in there and was going to complete my turn. And, and unfortunately, I was in his lane at that time. So yours truly received the ticket. And uh, I heightened my awareness and education through another uh, class. So. Uh, it was good, but I, it was a, a frustrating thing. And, and I hope that, again, all the things that we're doing and understanding driving patterns that will not only help people like me to learn how what to do, but also people who are, are, again, in that hurried sense. It seems like in today's world, too, that there's a heightened um, awareness or at least visual component with more social media, uh, Living Chandler, Akatil Friends, 
they've done some good things in terms of letting us know if there's issues and problems, but also then seeming it, seemingly making it look like there's a lot of accidents that are occurring on our roads. What have you seen us in, in your department with Chandler Roads and the, the level of traffic accidents? I, for this year, we're actually down from last year. Um, we're down on non-injury accidents, slightly up on injury accidents, but we're, we're trending on a downward, downwards uh, phase compared to last year. Um, I think social media may, may help exacerbate some of that. The reality is, um, especially in South Chandler, um, very few of those intersections down there would even crack the top 15 to 20 of high accident locations. Um, I think it's important for people to understand the factual information and know that we're looking at data on a monthly basis, so we know where those intersections are. It's always helpful to get information from the community on, on specific problems, but we're constantly monitor, monitoring that data and collecting it, and we identify problems much quicker than most people probably realize, and we take measures to try to make them safe. And I think I, I know your answer, but particularly as we uh, enter into the holidays, what recommendations would you have to keep our intersections and our roads even even safer, more of the same or anything else you'd recommend? I would have people just slow down and uh, you know just, just take it easy. I, the holidays are a stressful time period and, and um, you, know, you mentioned the retail intersections. Uh, Chandler Boulevard and Price, there's 80,000 vehicles a day go through there. And at the holidays that goes up. Um, we have a lot of accidents within that corridor, not, not bad accidents, but we have a lot of accidents and it's uh, people not paying attention. So it's really just slowing down, paying attention. Um, and I would say Gilbert and Jermaine's kind of the same. Slow down, pay attention, know where you're going, obey the traffic laws, don't get in a hurry. Well, very good. And now you had mentioned a little bit earlier about our police Facebook page. I, I know that we're very active in terms of responding to residents. So if someone had a question about anything that we were talking about today, what would you suggest they do? We have uh, our Chandler Facebook page at, uh, at Chandler PD. We also have our Twitter at Chandler Police, and we also have our website. Uh, with that, people can uh, ask their questions they, privately. So if there's any concerns, they can go on any of those three social media sites answer questions, and those are monitored 24-7 by the Public Information Office. And something that has really made me proud as a resident of Chandler, I, I know that when people have had concerns, and it seems like there's a cluster of concerns, whether crime or, or accidents, that we've been very proactive in terms of setting up meetings. Would, would obviously, uh, how would someone go about doing that or pursuing that? if they were interested in learning more or having someone come to a neighborhood group? Uh, same thing with our social media sites. And like I said, each, uh, each precinct in our city, there's three precincts, has a crime prevention officer too. So all the information is on the website, the phone numbers, the emails. So if they uh, want educational, like Lieutenant Beach mentioned prior, uh, at a school or uh, a community event, they can reach us through those sites. Well, very good. Well, Sergeant Mija, Lieutenant Veach, our, our time is wrapping up. Any final thoughts that you might have? I don't believe so. Thank you for having us. Well, very good. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you again for your service. Uh, thank you for keeping our streets safe. And once again, this is Chandler in Focus. I'm Council Member Kevin Hartke. Look forward to seeing you the next time. Have a safe holiday. Mm -hmm.